next week. This is the date set for the Parliament session in which Jordi Sanchez could be sworn in as Catalan president, at least in theory. Hello and welcome to Catalan News. Activist Jordi Sanchez has been in jail for almost five months, yet pro-independence parties have agreed to appoint him as the head of the Catalan government. The Parliament session to elect him is set for Monday next week. But will he be able to effectively assume office? That depends on the Spanish justice, and also on the far-left coup party and its four MPs. Considering what each of them expects from Sanchez and from pro-independence parties, the success of this election is far from assured. Here at Catalan News, we'll also talk about recycling, a music festival in the countryside, and the relationship between Barcelona and one of the most celebrated writers of the 20th century. Let's begin. After Carles Puigdemont comes Jordi Sanchez. And again, Spanish courts are having their say. While Puigdemont was not allowed to retake the presidential office from Brussels, it is yet to be seen whether Sanchez, his successor, will be allowed to leave prison and assume the post. But even if he gets permission, there's another obstacle in the way, the far-left coup party. The two main pro-independence groups have less than a week to get votes from the coup, but satisfying both the requirements of coup and the Spanish justice might not be easy. It's a deal. The two main pro-independence parties in Catalonia have agreed to appoint Jordi Sanchez, a jailed activist, as the next head of government. The investiture debate in Parliament is set for next Monday, but if Junts per Catalunya and Esquerra Republicana want to make Sanchez's election effective, there are two obstacles they need to overcome. First of all, Sanchez needs to leave jail and be able to attend the Parliament. He has been in prison since mid-October for his role in the Catalan independence movement at the grassroots level. His trial, though, could still take months. Today, his defense team filed a request asking Spanish courts for his release. The lawyers argued that his continued incarceration undermines Sanchez's political rights and interferes with the normal functioning of Catalan institutions. More importantly, his defense team says that Sanchez and his party accept the decisions of the Constitutional Court, the same court that suspended the referendum and the Declaration of Independence last October. That might be problematic considering what the second obstacle to Sanchez's election is, the far-left coup party. Last weekend, this pro-independence group rejected his candidacy. The problem was not him, they said, but the political agreement put forward by Junts per Catalunya and Esquerra. They accused them of abiding by the Spanish constitution. Major pro-independence parties have less than a week to convince the coup that they stand by the Catalan Republic. Si eh, rebem una proposta que ens fa pensar que s'ha de convocar un nou consell polític, doncs es convocarà, però mm, això ho decidirem en base als fets i en base a les propostes que tinguem a sobre de la taula. Without Coop's four MPs, Sánchez's election could still be possible, but in order to have enough votes, two pro-independence MPs in Belgium would be forced to resign and leave their seats to a colleague who can make the vote count. One of those who would have to step down is Carlos Puigdemont, the deposed Catalan president who chose Sanchez as his successor. Do pro-independence parties really mean to elect Sanchez? Or are they just prolonging this political stalemate? This is what some unionist parties are asking. But Sanchez's party, Junts per Catalunya, say they're dead serious, even threatening to bring the judge who has to decide on Sanchez's freedom to court. A nosaltres ens indigna aquesta farsa, perquè ningú vol que el Jordi Sánchez sigui el president de la Generalitat. Ni el senyor Puigdemont, ni Esquerra, ni Junts per Cat. És la intenció de promoure eh, una querella criminal, en aquest cas eh, contra el jutge Llarena, per prevaricació, si no resol favorablement la petició de llibertat, la petició de ser present en aquest eh, Parlament eh, per part de Jordi Sánchez. El debat és si el dilluns caminem, si estem caminant cap a un ple amb, una, amb un candidat efectiu o si això és un joc tàctic per després solucionar uh, la papereta amb un tercer candidat del qual encara no sabem el nom. I és que entenem que insistir en aquesta via és una pèrdua de temps i a més està condemnada aquesta investidura al fracàs. His is now a household name, but who is Jordi Sánchez? Here is a look into the story of the man who could become the next president of Catalonia. He has gone from political activism to becoming the candidate to succeed Carlos Puigdemont as Catalan president. 
Jordi Sanchez became a major pro-independence figure in 2015 when he was appointed the head of the Catalan National Assembly, one of the major pro-independence civil organizations. But Sanchez already had a long career as a political activist behind him. His involvement in political issues began in the 80s. He was a member of the Call for Solidarity organization, which defended the Catalan language and culture, as well as campaigning for the recognition of Catalonia as a nation. Sanchez also worked as a political science professor and was even a member of the Catalan Ombudsman. Yet he gained much greater political relevance in 2015 when he was appointed the Catalan National Assembly President. Everything changed on October the 16th. He was sent to prison along with another grassroots pro-independence leader, both accused of sedition and rebellion for their role in Catalonia's push for independence. Sanchez is still in prison awaiting trial. Spanish courts have turned down his requests to be released, arguing that there's a risk of repeat offending. While incarcerated, he ran in the December 21st election after resigning as head of the Catalan National Assembly. He was Puigdemont's number two on the Junts per Catalunya ticket and was elected as an MP, despite being behind bars. Puigdemont's decision to step aside has now pushed Sanchez to the forefront of politics, pending the judicial response to his candidacy for president. And more on the judicial front. A general strike held last November 8th to protest the imposition of direct rule from Madrid saw groups of people from all over the country blocking roads and railways with the aim of bringing Catalonia to a standstill. More than half a hundred people have been summoned to appear in court. Some did today, although most refused to testify. The case attracted hundreds of people outside the court in Igualada, just west of Barcelona, on Tuesday morning in support of the defendants. Among those present were high-profile supporters of independence, including MPs, actors and grassroots activists. The lawyer coordinating the defense of the 51 people said that it was unheard of for such a case to reach court, and he believes the case will be dropped. Es tractava d'una manifestació parada en el dret de vaga en la qual no hi va haver violència, coacció, desordres, danys a les persones i en tot moment es va respectar la situació de normalitat dins del que era la concentració. As the world's population continues to grow, waste management is key to the future of the environment. And one region in northern Catalonia has kicked off an initiative aimed at inspiring people to recycle more. In Pallar Sobirà, a door-to-door -door rubbish collection service has been in operation for two years. Since it began, the number of people recycling in towns where the service is available has increased threefold. And now, the local council has decided to take the campaign even further by rewarding the top 100 households which recycle best. Prices include dinner for two and even passes to a local adventure park. The council hopes that this will encourage people to dispose of their rubbish correctly, as well as inspiring those who haven't done so yet to sign up for the collection service. La campanya pretén doncs dues coses: corregir mals hàbits, eh, i intentar doncs tornar a pretar perquè la gent doncs doncs recicli bé, faci faci bé aquest aquest l'entrega dels residus. Molt bé, el, el projecte Porta a Porta és un projecte viu, no, no se no comença i s'acaba en un any. És un projecte que eh, d'aquí 10 anys encara s'estarà millorant. Now, let's move on to culture in honor of a name you might recognize. Gabriel García Márquez, or Gabo, celebrated Colombian writer and journalist. Today, he would have been 91 years old. But did you know that, for many years, he also called Barcelona his home? It was 1967 when Gabriel García Márquez moved to the Catalan capital, where he would stay with his wife and children for seven years. This was right after the publication of his renowned novel, 100 Years of Solitude, which García Márquez actually pushed to be translated into Catalan. The ties of García Márquez to Catalonia were many. He was close with groundbreaking literary agent Carme Balcells, and the notorious altercation with writer Mario Vargas Llosa involved an episode in Barcelona. Even after García Márquez moved to Mexico, he frequently visited the city, which would, the year after his death, award him a gold medal in recognition of his work. Still on culture, there's no shortage of festivals in Catalonia, with the upcoming season offering something for everyone. And if you prefer to get out of the city for an event, Claunia Festival might be just what you need. The festival announced part of its lineup today, promising to be the most ambitious and international one yet. Held in late June in northern Catalonia, this year marks the event's fifth edition. Attendees will see performers like Australian ska band Cat Empire take to the stage. This alongside Charango, 
Catalan Fun in the Sun fusion music local to the area where the festival takes place. And as it so happens, Charango are also the producers of the event. Another name that was announced in the lineup is one you may have heard, Baltonic, the very same Mallorcan rapper who was recently sentenced to three and a half years in prison by the Spanish courts for his song lyrics. We finished our show for today, but let's stay on music for just a bit longer. 2018 is a year to celebrate Catalan conductor Antonio Rosmarva, and this is why the modernist Barcelona concert hall, the Palau de la Musica, is promoting various performances in homage to the artist. Last week saw Orfeo Catalá and the Orfeo Donostiarra Children's Choir take to the stage. For the next performance this Sunday, you can even see one directed by Marba himself. We hope you like it, and we'll see you tomorrow.